of of uh over the weekend maybe it was a week ago it felt like maybe it was a week or maybe a week ago um octavian the rapper decided to jump on a very popular twitter space that's kind of popped up in uh, that that's become really popular over knockdown i would say called um harsh reality notice um hosted by this guy called as right he does these really interesting um twitter spaces where he basically rambles on and on about um non-league football players because if i'm not mistaken this kid's got a background in like um playing professional football he may or may not try to make it um he then realized that he wasn't going to make it and has a bit of a chip on his shoulder maybe a bit of resentment wherever it is but he seems to have a real axe grind in terms of non-league football players especially non-league football players who enjoy their jobs the kind of people who kind of post you know pre-match day pictures of them getting ready to go to the game you know cleaning their boots on the way there in the car whatever he just has a problem with those guys i guess acting professional i don't know what it is but he just you know he hosts these really interesting podcasts interesting topics and they sorry interesting twitter spaces interesting topics and they'd be attended by the in the thousands right which is quite a high number for twitter spaces which is special which is basically like a clubhouse and it'd be really kind of well attended um, you know, it gets a bit boring after a while. So he decided to kind of switch up, I guess, and get some controversial type figures in to kind of really get the, um, to kind of really get people noticing it, you know, and get it trending and whatnot, as he says, yeah. I'll make sure yeah, you, you hashtag harsh reality notice, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> he decided to kind of get trending again and decided to bring on Octavian, who most of you would be aware, especially if you're in the UK, that, um, you know, very prominent kind of rising artist here in the UK or in Europe or maybe parts of North America. No, I don't think North America. I think mostly a UK kind of European act, I would say. I'm not sure if that's right or wrong. I was a big fan of his from the moment I saw that first video of him in a car. I don't know what, which one that was called, where they're riding down the street, you know, had a very unique sort of voice, had this really interesting kind of accent going on. Um, and I'm, I'm a big stickler for tone. I think someone's tone and how they rap and how they sing, put words together, plays a huge part in how I listen to the music, how I enjoy it. This is why I could never get into Big Sean, no matter how lyrically awesome he is. It's just that voice is just, just too jarring. Um, he seemed to kind of tick all the boxes for me in that regard. You know, great look, sounds amazing. The video's always really well done. But for whatever reason, it felt like I could see from afar, you know, being somebody that kind of, you know, I would say is um, familiar with this type of music that he was quickly burning out. Like he he got a lot of fame and a lot of success really quickly. And then it seemed like the more I kept seeing him out and about, you know, maybe through friends or maybe through pictures and whatnot, doing shoots, da, 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 the quality of the music started to dip as well. And it was a real concern because, you know, usually in that kind of um, scenario, if a person, especially a young male, is given that much money and given that much success and fame and whatnot, and they're able to kind of indulge in all their vices, it can, you know, usually it ends in a catastrophe. So um, it didn't end that way, luckily, but the music got really terrible. And then out of nowhere, um, I guess he was one of the unlucky casualties of the lockdown because during lockdown, he got involved in a bit of a spat with his missus or ex, I guess, um, this girl called Emo Baby, who basically alleged that he abused her at home and she recorded these really damning videos that made him look like a psycho because it looked like he was high off something rambling about something here and da, 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 who knows um she released pictures of her injuries text messages that sounded pretty sick but you know by all intents and purposes when that evidence came out you just we just all believed hey dr evans a woman beater how you know how dare he hurt this woman she looks really sweet and innocent she looks really nice and supportive and all this sort of stuff that was a narrative that came out and to be honest too my man didn't help himself i remember straight after the incident he was kind of went silent about it they did some weird instagram videos and lives and stories tr basically acting quite laissez-faire whatever not a big deal about it but he didn't do what i think most men should do in this scenario again I'm not a celebrity. I'm not someone noteworthy. I'm sure it's different when you're that rich and that young with that much kind of, you know, responsibility on your shoulders, and whatnot. But I've always been a big believer that as a dude, you should always, always be willing to kind of, you know, exhaust every single avenue you can exhaust to clear your name when it comes to touching up kids, the R word, and domestic violence like those should be three things that you should if you definitely didn't do it you should be fighting tooth and nail to prove your innocence and especially 
in my opinion, in the court of public opinion, because saying you're going to just keep quiet and, you know, you're going to let the courts decide is nonsense because if my opinion, I think that's a cop out because we all know people get away with shit all the time. People get released from, you know, sentences that they probably shouldn't get be released from so early. I just saw a story earlier on about this other rapper in the UK called Young Diz, who, if I'm not mistaken from, again, I'm only, I don't really familiar with his music, but I'm only familiar with seeing him, you know, being featured on stuff like Eight Poncho and, um, scarcity and stuff right i remember if i'm not mistaken he must have kidnapped some kid or something tortured him i don't know something crazy right who knows the reasons why but you know someone got taken somewhere against their will and they got subjected to some form of violence right <laughs> that's what i know for sure happened and this rapper you know was given a double digit sentence i think it was maybe plus 10 years right for that for that kind of crime which is pretty gnarly and then i saw a story the other day like oh he might be releasing a year and a half and it's like what how does that make sense? Of course, most likely he would get released in a year and a half. That means you have to serve the remainder of his time on tag or, you know, whatever. I don't know, whatever. Something will happen in that regard. But this idea that, the reason I'm saying that is I'm saying this idea that if you get accused of, you know, the R word, touching up kids or domestic violence, you should just keep quiet and let the courts decide is nonsense because the courts prove again and again that sentencing doesn't mean jack, you know, just because you didn't get found guilty in the court of law doesn't mean you didn't do it and just because you you know get released you know shortly you know just quite soon after you're into your 13 year sentence doesn't mean also that you are innocent of the crime it's just that's not not the case at all so i think in that case when it comes to octavian in this he obviously did a bit of a faux pas in my opinion because he didn't come and defend himself vigorously enough um, especially considering that in all intents and purposes again not to be mean to the kid but he's a bit of a dummy like he's legitimately after hearing him speak and defend himself on the twitter spaces he legitimately is a bit dumb right um maybe you know maybe a bit slow in that regard which again not his fault but he is supremely talented at making music clearly he's got a good given talent to like make good tunes right good harmonies lyrics and stuff and you know just good eyes in my opinion especially if he kind of lays off all the other vices or whatnot i reckon he'll be decent he'll have a decent career but he didn't defend himself vigorously enough and i think that is what ended up costing him because from what i could gather again it was on twitter spaces it went on for like five hours there's actually a clip here i'm actually gonna play quickly just so you can get a hear of it what it kind of sounds like where is it oh is it not that one it's not that one is it this yeah this is the one this is a clip of the a segment of the five hour twitter space so you can kind of hear what he was basically saying he was basically on there defending himself in the court of public opinion he was basically in the town square equivalent right trying to basically fight for his freedom or fight for his life and this is a clip of it that or or or, or draw in this chat go and pull up the evidence that this girl put against me i've never run away from it go and bring up the evidence and then you're gonna see for yourself because of what i've said that raw if the evidence is bare clear and it's, it's, it's bare clear to cancel or to drop or to say this guy is an abuser, then it should be even clearer for the feds. It should be rest me today. Do you understand? Mm. So, so we are not, the, the public, you're not lawyers and you're not that. And, and my ex-girlfriend, she knows that about you lot. So what she wanted to do to me because I broke up with her, not she broke up with me and found the courage to mm. go out and, and, and say this. It wasn't like that. It was on the day of my album. She brought out a video of us two arguing. Yeah. In the video, she's like, she's like, this is what happens in the video now, yeah? She's like, she repeats to me, yeah? She's only started filming and she's obviously cut the video to a certain... Anyway, you know, you get the gist of what he's basically saying. He was on there defending himself. You know, I don't know where his actual def def lawyers were because that was clearly a bit of a bad decision and a bad move. But <clears throat> considering the severity of the ac accusations, considering also that he legitimately, I don't think, he legitimately can't do anything else apart from make music. He clearly doesn't have the acumen, in my opinion, to do anything else worthwhile. So he has to kind of fight for his life. And clearly he was trying to. But from what I can surmise, it sounded like they were in a very toxic relationship. There was a lot of stuff that went on behind closed doors that we will ever, never know about, which I'm fine with. I don't care for the most part. And I think, unfortunately, 
he was just too dumb to realize what was going on in front of his eyes in terms of the recording, in terms of the screaming and the documenting of injuries and whatnot. He was clearly getting played in some way, shape or form. Don't get me wrong. He played into it too. I'm sure by being aggressive and whatnot, but they were clearly having such a tough relationship that they were doing those kind of weird things that people do to each other in tough relationships, right? Where they kind of being a vindictive and want to see each other suffer. But in the end, they always come back together anyway. And for whatever reason, we've been put in the middle of it. And I think, it's unfair for the public to get involved because I think for the most part, especially when you think of who was getting on the space, I think there was a guy called Lippy and this other guy, um, Bully or Billy, B, something B, that were getting on there basically trying to like, you know, um, boy him on the space and flex and whatnot and kind of put pressure on him and whatnot. It, it was a bit lame, to be fair. And it kind of felt like they were playing to the crowd, right? They were trying to appease the women that were in there who were feeling triggered, who were feeling as if like he was on there kind of excusing his behavior and basically giving a license or a reason for abusers to feel empowered and blah, blah, blah. People don't believe black women, you know, the usual stuff, right? Which I can understand, but that was, you know, just because you want to say your piece doesn't mean that you can't, just because I want to say my piece doesn't mean you should, you're free to interpret it in some, in the most um, unappealing way ever. And that's a bit unfair, but I get it. I get the whole point. But I thought that was a bit lame from the dudes trying to get up there and flex on him in that regard because they were only picking on him because he's Octavian, right? They know what he looks like. They think, you know, he's any guy and whatnot. But if this was Skepta or somebody, they probably wouldn't have said the same thing, which made me think as well about the Skepta thing because, again, it's not his fault and he didn't do anything. But I don't think even to this day we've actually heard him comment at all. We've heard Jamie comment on it, you know, who's his brother, who has who's further detached from the situation, but we've not heard Kepsa once commentate on two of his ex-crew members being put in prison for some fairly heinous crimes, right? Especially the the one guy, what's his name? I forgot the one with the beard, right? That was accused of raping, you know, a certain amount of women and whatnot. Like, not one comment from him in that regard. Not one comment also from the, what would you call them? The UK influencer media type personalities, right? That talk about this sort of stuff. They all kind of kept quiet, maybe because of connections, maybe because of whatever, but no one really said anything. There was no real uproar. Um, there was maybe some, but not in the level of when it comes to Octavian. I think, you know, again, maybe because of what he looks like, he looks like a neek. I don't really know. Who knows what the, what the vibe is? But I thought that double sound was a bit weird. Like, if Lippy wants to get, you know, with no pun intended, Lippy with Octavian, he should do the same energy or keep the same energy when it comes to Skepta and that's the topic comes up. But again, it wouldn't because of whatever reason, sort of same thing, cool, whatever. Let's move on. On the case of the whole issue, generally, I, I, I walked away from it thinking to myself, I don't care about either of these people, generally, because I feel like a lot of us, especially if you're from ENDS, you have to be honest and say, we've all kind of encountered people like this couples like this doesn't matter if they're black or white they exist in every end right especially in back in school there'd be a couple that were just you know weirdly aggressive with each other toxic and, uh, before we even knew what the word toxic meant gaslighting all this sort of nonsense before we knew what those phrases meant we we lived around it we had people in our family that did it i know for myself i had you know certain aunties that would come to my house who would be like you know who went through some madness back home and whatnot mum be supporting them like we've all seen it we've all know what it is and unfortunately much like similar to like losing weight there's nothing someone can say to you to for you to like make the decision to change your you know your lifestyle and your eating habits you have to decide yourself internally nothing is gonna no amount of shame no amount of name calling or ostracization nothing's nothing's gonna push you to make that change in your life unless you decide okay this is the day i change same thing comes with toxic relationships and abusive relationships for them for the most part you know there's always that thing about you know the abuser always running back to their partner like well you know the situation is it's sad it's annoying it's frustrating especially if it's a close friend or close family member but it is what it is like it happens all the time and i think for people to kind of get their nose put out of shape and get all kind of um what's that thing called get all kind of high and mighty and pointing and finger wagging at Kevin. It's a bit lame, to be honest, because we know it happens all the time, more often than not. And I also think in this case, for me personally, when it comes to the whole counterculture from that malarkey, again, I'm not a fan. Of, I think he, he, he allegedly might have committed one of the three deadly sins in terms of, you know, one being domestic violence, the other one being touching kids and the other one being rape. Obviously, when you do one of those things or accuse of one of those things, it's going to be long for you. But when it comes to me and it comes to counterculture, I've always said, I'm not a big believer in like the industry or the gatekeepers deciding, hey, you can't have a career 
you don't get a label or no you don't get you don't get the opportunity to put your stuff on spotify and stuff like that i don't like that i don't like that kind of industry influence of like no playlist for you no this no that i think that fans should always decide if this market decides hey we're not going to mess with you no more because you beat up women then cool you're done you're dead go and put your application into tesco's but this idea that everyone should collectively get together and not listen to his music because you think he might have done something is nuts in my opinion especially if you could put into consideration the counter evidence that's been provided by some anonymous instagram account which is most likely being run by Octavian, let's be for real um called um the truth about emo baby or something like that right I, i'm not sure if it's out it's up anymore but last time i checked there was accounts of people basically leaving anonymous some of them not anonymous accounts of the other the girl in the situation being a not so savory character which makes sense right she's never going to be the angel that she painted that to be because nothing's ever black and white there's always two sides of the story blah de, blah 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 and it kind of painted the story or it kind of painted a picture that looked like they both were bad for each other right and they both met each other at the kind of best and worst possible time in their life again i'm not i'm no psychologist i'm not psychoanalyzing people but it just is what it is and clearly you know both were kind of in over their heads it is what it is true and i don't know like that's it basically like it's just is what it is and i think for the most part it's kind of worked out for the both of them i guess in some extent she's got the opportunity to kind of break up with him publicly and kind of put some distance on that got a documentary and you know changed her world in terms of what she's basically standing for and what she wants to do in life from what it sounds like he said he's got a new girl now with a kid on the way it's kind of worked out for the betterment of both of them which is what made me really think about like why is he on this space in the first place because i thought to myself like if he legitimately still has fans that want to go to shows and you know buy his music and stuff that should be enough like i think pushing for the acceptance or the forgiveness from the public especially the court of public opinion especially the ones that exist on social media who always want to kind of you know um position themselves to be the morally just person in the room i think is a fool's errand in my opinion it doesn't make any sense like if you've got if your fans don't mind that you hit women allegedly then just play to your fans why do you care what people on the internet think um i guess the only reason he maybe can counter it and say oh because this narrative is denying me the ability to get a deal I think that's the consequence, of course, of being accused of what you've been accused of. This is why it's important when you get accused of stuff like that, that you come out of the blocks strong and fast, right? You don't let that lie. You don't let it go by a minute or a day. I know it's not, it's not a good example because, you know, he's a different caliber of artist, but look what happened to Justin Bieber that time when you got accused of touching a fan or something. Remember that time something happened to him, right? he came through with receipts and a half like geotag location this screenshot that dm this this follow he had a whole dossier full of evidence that basically proved that what that lady or whoever it was said what they said was completely false and you need that because that smudge that smoke on your name or that kind of rub is something that you cannot get off if you let it go too long and you know maybe because he's a bit of a he's a bit of a dumb dumb that octavian he didn't come across like the smartest guy in the room or the smartest guy in the world in that regard when he was speaking to twitter spaces or maybe because he just didn't know how to articulate himself because it was you know a very stressful situation but regardless he kind of did it to himself like it is what it is um take your career for what it is at the moment and just enjoy it for what it is at that instant but I thought the bully boy tactics by the other guys that came on the spaces was lame because, you know, again, they won't keep the same energy for other people who did similar things. I thought the host bring him on a space without actually having a reason why to bring him on the space was a bit dumb too. It seemed like he just wanted to clow off of having Octavian there. He was really kind of, those instances where he was sucking up to him, asking him about the tune that he did with Future, which was absolutely terrible. That tune they did with Future, by the way, was when I realized Octavian was definitely partying too much and not focusing on making good music because that tune was ridiculously horrible, terrible and this is coming from a big future fan you know that was a you know he basically he basically uh what's that thing called flush money down the drain with that feature that needs to be said and then also the other thing that disappointing about the space he, they had mad dudes on there if you're gonna have a space like this talk about such a sensitive topic you might want to get on some girls or some females on there who can maybe speak a bit more eloquently about the topic maybe share some of their experiences maybe you who knows you might find one that one might want to back you up but then it was interesting what happened for the most part 
that host had more smoke for women when they basically were pushing back on him or taking the piss. I remember this one girl kind of started taking the make what she called him. She called him a beta male or something, right? In the recording. I mean, if you can find the recording, you'll see the section. And he just wouldn't let it go for like another hour or so. He was really heated off the back of that and kind of locked her off straight away, which again is a lame, but he does that all the time, this host anyway. Whenever someone presses him and kind of really gets at him, he always kind of locks them off and mutes them. So he's a little bit of a he's a little, little bit of a weird dude in that regard. But if anything, in the court of public opinion, it did more damage than good. It pro- it painted Octavian to be a bit of a loser. Um, he came across really badly. He was double speaking on stuff. There was a section where he was like, oh, I didn't know selling drugs was bad. I was just doing it to survive. I was like, what? Like, the kind of guy that, I think he even said a few times, on it, like, he's the kind of guy who legitimately thinks because if you ever found, if you ever found guilt, not guilty in a court of law, that means you definitely didn't do it. It's like, in his head, there's no such thing as like people getting away with crime. Just like the court of law is like the highest court of the, it's like the ultimate um, judiciary system, right? Like, if you are found not guilty there, that means you definitely didn't do it, which was a bizarre defense to put on yourself. And this idea that, oh, because only one person said it that that means i'm not an abuser was just insane to to say out like but again i can't blame the kid because like i said he's not the sharpest tool in the box this is his only way to legitimately support himself and his family especially his growing family so it makes complete sense that you would kind of come out and say hey like i didn't do this i'm not the guy you think i am give me another chance so that he can maybe try and get back on the stages because there was a time when he was legit one of the biggest acts coming out of the scene and now you know look at central c in that time you know central c's blown up and whatnot like you know he's forgotten forgotten about pretty quickly even in terms of his music uh, you know you'd be hard pressed to find a lot of people out there who are probably banging octavian music now who aren't his fans you know what i mean so for sure I, I get why he came out and defended himself so vigorously but for me it was a bad move and it came across really badly but i get it and ultimately to end this ultimately i do not care i really don't like they clearly were in a toxic relationship they clearly were terrible for each other they clearly manipulated each other in certain ways maybe they manipulate the audience and the media whatever to gain whatever they can from it and they'll probably continue to do so throughout the rest of their lives unless they decide to change but again i don't care because i don't know these people so i think that's the main point people have to take away from this especially given what's actually going on in the world to get in the middle of this and even now i'm feeling annoyed that i'm even speaking about it for that long it just feels like such a waste of time like a legitimate waste of time and um i'm never gonna get it back really i'm not gonna get it back i think i only listened to like the last two and a half hours maybe i think um because i missed that lippy part i had to watch a clip of him going off on him and even that was like lame going on there like i'm not lip i'm not thing i'm not as but that was no to be fair it was lame but it was a really good insult i think he said something like i'm not as so he basically he he insulted the host and he insulted Octavian at the same time by right? with the veiled threat. Like, I'm not as, I'll come around there and knock you out or something. It was like, wow. And that, what do you mean you're not as? What do you mean you're not as? That was fucking hilarious, man. But yeah, um, check it out if you want the five hour spaces with him on there. I don't recommend you do. Believe who you want, you know. And if you like his music, support his music. If you don't, don't. If you want to support or whatever, you know, it is what it is. Um, They'll both figure it out. They're both big people. They'll figure it out.